The Radio Forest Podcast. Forest, my darling, it's Leanne. Leanne, how are you? Honey, I'm good, you angel. I love the name Forest, and I have got, my granddaddy was Forest, and my son is saving that name for a baby. My son's best friend is Forrest, so I'm tickled to talk to you. One R or two R's in Forrest with your... Uh, two R. Two, two R's. R's, uh-huh. Absolutely. Like yours. Hey, I just talked to a friend of yours. I was trying to get some inside dirt, and all he told me was, you're always telling him to have kids. That's comedian Greg Warren. Oh, uh, honey, I told Greg I'd have a baby for him. I'd be a <laughs> surrogate. Honey, he needs to have 10. You know, he wrestled in college. And I told him, I go, Greg, I know I, I tell this on the radio all the time, and I've got to stop talking about how I should have a baby for you. Because I, I think he, you know, it's kind of private. And then I sit up and talk about, and he probably doesn't want a 57 year old woman to have a baby for him. <laughs> but I love him. We're talking to Leanne Morgan. I'm Every Woman is out on Netflix. She's a professional comedian. But Leanne, you seem like you enjoyed being a mother so much. I've got two young kids. They're very close yeah. in age. I find it so difficult. Right now, they're five and four. Mm-hmm. They don't ever oh, shut listen. up. They don't ever listen. I'll be like, I'm going to pull the car out of the garage. Stay in the house. Uh-huh. The one thing I tell them not to do, they'll do. Yeah. Well, in Forest, I, you know, I'm now grown and got, uh, I mean, they're mine are all grown and I'm, I've got a grandbaby and another one on the way. And so I want you to know when I talk about all my little children, it was hard. I mean, I'm not saying it was perfect, and I know I could probably put that like it was, but but it was hard. And, you know, when you got little children at home and everybody's crying and you want time with your wife and, you know, my husband would want time with me and I'd be, you know, I'd watch Barney all day and I'm, and everybody grabbed me and held on to me and I just want <laughs> yeah. to be left alone. It's a hard time, so don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. It's a hard time, but it will go by so fast, so just try not to. If anybody, and I know you hadn't asked my advice, but no, fight I am. the big I, battles, not the little ones. Let the little ones roll off your back. Heard recently your middle daughter went on a couple of dates with Morgan Wallen. Was this before he was big or was he? Yes, yes, honey. He was trying to make it. He had gotten, he was on The Voice and, you know, he's from Knoxville where I'm from. And that little thing, he and I did a gig together that was, you know, we didn't get paid. I mean, we were <laughs> both struggling. And I and we were um, in the back. I was eating cheese, and <laughs> I, I listened to him. I thought he was wonderful. But I remember thinking, "Oh my gosh, the country music business is so hard." That little thing, he needs to just. I didn't mean to squash his dreams, but I was like, "This is, you know, this is going to be too hard." <laughs> and because um, there's so many talented people, you know, that you'll never know who they are. There's no. so many talented. How is he going to break through? And then, honey, he broke through. But yes, they went on a couple of dates. She was at UT. And she thought he was darling, but, you know, it just kind of fizzled. But, yeah, he took her to the Chipotle on the Strip on Cumberland Avenue. Very classy. Mm-hmm. Very sweet. Have you ever had an opener that you thought, yeah, probably not going to have a good shot, but then they kind of turn around and they're great? I've done that on the radio side. I thought a band, I'm like, I hear a song, I'm like, this band's never going to make it. Then it become <laughs> huge. I was like, I was way wrong. A lot of times yeah. I've been wrong. Oh, there's a lot of people that I'm way wrong on, and I, I could never be Simon Cowell because evidently I do not have that talent. There's a lot of people that I have thought, hmm, they need to get a real job and have some health insurance. And one of my other friends, that she'll open for me, and we've been traveling on and off together for 20 years. She's like, Lynn, you've got to quit squashing people's dreams. And I don't <laughs> mean to. Yeah. It's just so hard. You know, the show business is so up and down and so hard that I just – feel for little children trying to make it. Did you feel like you could make it right away? Was it uh, kind of a slow process to getting on stage? I know you started with the jewelry shows or the jewelry parties. Yeah. But when you first uh, got on stage and you're performing jokes in front of a crowd, how did that go? Did it go great right away? It did. Now, I did a couple of open mics that were horrific and I wanted somebody to shoot me. But once I started, they let me up at that at the comedy club, the first comedy club that I was around in Texas. I, you know what? I just I had hope because I, I for one reason, I thought I'm different. I'm different than everybody. I mean, here I was in Austin, Texas, where everybody, you know, is very hip and very progressive, and everybody's high on marijuana. And I was honey in a pair of capri <laughs> pants with birds on them, with a, with a kitten heel and a bob haircut, raising three little children. So I knew, I I just, I thought, you know what, if anything, I'm different. 
How did you go from from Tennessee in 2001 to Texas? Was that your your husband's job? What what got it you guys was to move? My husband's job. Yes, he was put over South Texas, and it was. I look back, and it had to have been a God thing because I had been selling jewelry, but I knew I wanted to do comedy, and I was kind of doing comedy around East Tennessee. I didn't have a club, but I would do like the Rotary Club or something, you know, and I'd get paid $50 or whatever. And then we moved to San Antonio, Texas, and they had a club. And, but down the road, 45 minutes, was Austin. Cap City Comedy Club was the best comedy club, one of the best in the United States, and that's where I would go. I had people that lifted me up there and helped me. Now, did the dynamic switch at all then? So now you're touring, you've got specials, you're on Bob and Tom, you're on Good Morning America. Has the dynamic shifted with you and your husband? Because is it safe to say, in addition to the jewelry, you're mostly a stay-at-home mom raising three kids. Now you've got a solid career. Has that changed a yeah, little bit? Yeah, a little bit, honey. I've got a little power now. You know, <laughs> I, just bought a big, I just bought a big swing set for my grandbaby. And pay cash for it. So, yes, I'm feeling a little powerful right now. I do hope, I think it took him a long time to figure out what was happening because I, for 20 years, I mean, I made money, but it wasn't anything. Like, he'd have to pay my taxes because I'm so unorganized. And then all my money went to my children getting haircuts and uniforms and stuff like that. And so when this started, all this, he was like, what in the, what? And so <laughs> it's been hard for him to realize what was going on. I think all these years he's always supported me, but I think he thought, oh, that kooky Lynn, let's just let kooky Lynn do our kooky <laughs> thing. But now, I mean, I hope, my hope is that he can loosen up a little bit and enjoy himself because he has worked like a mule for us. And Lord put everybody through school and everybody, you know, had to get their hair highlighted and he's been through a lot. So I'm hoping that he will relax a little bit. But so far, no. So far, he's still just as wound up and honey, white knuckling a golf cart. <laughs> Can I ask you a question about dogs? I've had two beagles, and they were the hardest dog to get house trained. Is there any similarities with your dogs? Honey, okay, what is that? Yes, okay. I had a dachshund, and she was, I'm wondering if I just can't train dogs, because she was not good about, of course, she gotten heavy and old, and then she peed all the time in the house. The old beagle, when he got, we got him when he was a puppy, and he did all right for a long time and was pretty good. Got trained by an older dog that we were babysitting. And then now, as an old man, he hikes his leg. You cannot bring in a Target bag or anything <laughs> that he doesn't feel like he has to go mark. Just driving us nuts. And then the little beagle, I think she was trained. She was rescued. When we got her, she came in here and thought, oh, well, this is a big toilet. I can go anywhere I want to. Is it just the beagle breed, you think, or is it my fault? Here's my philosophy. I think because they're bred to be hunting dogs, I think they're just that outdoorsy, nature-inducing dog. So mine were like, I'm in a kennel. I'm like, no, this is the house. This is not This is not a kennel. This is not the yard. This is not the woods. You're not hunting rabbits. Everything's dog. outdoors, and I can pee on it. But do you think they're precious, though? Absolutely, yeah. I love them. I had a dog. Oh. I have, yeah, one named Smokey and one named Trigger. Yummy. Okay, I've got Gigi and Augie, and Augie's an old man, but he still feels good and is going and doing, and then Gigi's really the hunter. She gets out in her yard and kills rabbits and oh, wow. brings them in the house, and oh, they're both precious. Tell me about your deal with Vanity Fair. Is With the lingerie, is it your own line? Are you contributing money? I know there's something involved with like charity, and you're really involved. Oh, my darling, I, want, I need my own line. I would come out with my own big panties <laughs> and a big supportive bra. Without a wire in it. I hate a wire. But no, Vanity Fair, listen to how sweet this was. Vanity Fair said that they wanted to partner with me to help women get started and whatever, because I named the second tour Just Getting Started, because I feel like I'm just getting started at 57, that this has really happened for me at this age, at this point in my life. And they want to help women in midlife that may want to, you know, go back to school or start a business, give them seed money to do whatever they want to do. They're going to pick five women so people can apply. Right now, you can apply on VanityFair.com. You can nominate a friend or you can say yourself. And and they are going to pick women and help give them money to get started in whatever they want to do. Is that not precious? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I do too, and I'm thankful to be a part of it. They are so sweet, and they're sending me panties 
and bronze. You ought to see how many I've got. And they know me. They know I like a good high-cut brief. Your son, was that him introducing you on your new special now on Netflix? Yes. That's my boy. He's 29. He's the one that's got my grandbaby. So did he come out and do a couple of jokes, or did he just come out and say, here's my no. mom? No. Oh, Lord, no, honey. He was scared to death to do what he did. He introed me, and I just thought that was so special. And no, he's never done anything on stage. All my family came out, and his wife and my baby, my grandbaby, they all came out at the end. Now, my, my youngest is, all my kids, I think, are funny. I've got a good sense of humor, but she's funny and people ask her when i do clubs or whatever they'll go tess just get up and do three minutes just give us three minutes just try it and she's like no i don't have a spray tan (laughs) so she she could i think she could do this business i don't think she wants to but you know it's it's a daunting thing and not everybody's crazy enough to get up and do this and so she, yeah, she's, so far she has not done her first three minutes. Now you talk a lot about your family, your husband, your kids, your town, growing up, raising the kids and all that stuff. So I imagine anybody that comes within proximity of you is like, oh, Leanne, I've got the best thing for you. Wait till you hear this funny story. You should put it in your act. That's got to happen all the time, right? It happens all the time. And you know, one of them that I thought, I mean, I I really just don't feel like I can tell somebody else's story. I don't know. I just, it doesn't feel authentic to me. But people give me some of the funniest things. And there was one where a woman said that her little boy played T-ball. And he was running the bases and fell. And there was a dead possum that had like atrophy. I don't know what you call it. Atrophied or, but it, you know, it had claws and it was like just stuck in the grass. And that got hooked onto that little thing's uniform, his back, and he was running with a dead atrophy possum around. And I I thought, that sounds like something that would happen to me on a T-ball field. You had that T-ball story, right? Did one of your kids poop on the field? Yes. My my middle child went and pooped on the T-ball field, and I had to get a stick and flick (laughs) it into the woods because I was afraid somebody was going to step in it. I mean, that was one of the... When people say to me, oh, I've got little children and I'm, you know, I feel desperate and all that, I think, oh, my Lord, when my husband would be out trying to sell a trailer somewhere and wouldn't come to the T-ball field until the last minute and because he was trying to make a living for us, and I would be wrestling these three children. One would be on the T-ball field unhappy, didn't really want to be out there. We forced him to play. Then the middle one doo-dooed out there, and then the baby <laughs> was, I don't, she would have been, I don't know, a year to 18 months old, she was going through somebody's purse in the bleachers. I mean, it was. Just, I just remember thinking, I'm never going to have a minute of peace again in my life. That's how I remember feeling. It's like I was in fighting in Beirut. And I've noticed on Twitter, you listed as mom, wife, comedian in that order. That's got to be on purpose, right? Is that how you see yourself and how you want to present yourself? Yes, my darling, I do. Oh, I have been a mama, even through all this 20-something years of doing comedy, I was so lucky I got to put them first. That meant that I didn't, you know, I couldn't do clubs every week, and I had to take another path to do this business, but I got to raise them. And somebody said to me the other day in Hollywood, they said, Leanne, you've got the best of both worlds. You've got to raise these children and have a family, and then now this is happening to you when they don't need you, you know, like they did growing up. Because I could not have toured and done what I'm doing now if they were little. There's no way I couldn't have raised them. So I I have. I've got the best of both worlds, and I appreciate every minute of it every day. It's crazy. And how was taking care of your parents during the pandemic? That had to have been bittersweet, right? Like to spend the time with them, but it's also scary. Yeah, I was, you know, the COVID was frightening, and I was worried to death about them. And And I couldn't tour. They had announced this big tour. It was the biggest thing that ever happened to me. And I was looking so forward to it. And then they said, you can't go, you know, because of COVID. But I did. I got to take care of my little mom and daddy. And they're doing great. They're 80. And my dad will be 83. I had some precious time with them. And they come and stay with me. My house is handicapped for them. And, yeah, so they're doing great. I'll tell them you ask about them. I'm every woman. Now on Netflix, Leanne Morgan. She does not have her own line of panties. But she is doing a lot maybe of... Maybe I will. Maybe I will. I think and it's a, a great... jacket. That would be a great idea. Thank you so much for talking to me today. I can't wait to uh, see you on the road. Thank you, my angel. And tell my Greg Warren I love him. Will do. All right. All right. Bye, doll.